and that's how the looks of it. I dug up over there, you're going right at this is a nine inch spade. <clears throat> that's it right there. What's up guys? Welcome back for another video here at Triple R Farms. My name is Daniel and it is December the, uh, what is today? 7th, Thursday. Um, got some big news. We got a new piece of equipment, well new to us, that is being delivered today. So at some point in this video, you'll see what we bought. But uh, first, here's what we got on tap for today. I'm going to be jumping in this 8285 tractor, which is right behind y'all. We're going to be hooking this up to the J&M rolling basket. Mark's going to be running it, and he's going to be going behind where Philip was running the case inline ripper. He's going to go over all that land, and then he's going to be rolling some corn stalks over in the valley after that. James is headed back to the gravel pit. He is running the disc up there. Philip is bringing the 380 case. He's on the way from Blackwell's Bend right now. He got through with the speed disc. He's coming here to unhook. He's going to hook back to the inline ripper. And then he is headed back to Blackwell's Bend. We wanted to take that plow down there and try it on that dirt. Because that dirt can be really tricky uh, doing deep tillage down there. So we wanted to see how it, how it worked down there at Blackwell's Bend. So I'll be going down there at some point getting him set up. Um, let's see what else. I guess that's it. Let's get the video started. Well, we might not be using the 8285 because I think if we pull the J&M rolling basket, you need a clevis on the tongue. We'll go check out the 8320 and the rolling basket, see what we need. Golly, one arm had it. Which one? That one. Good.
So what we're doing with the J&M rolling basket is uh, a couple of videos ago we had a case uh, inline ripper demo that we were doing out here in this field um, and it's got an attachment that you can add to the shank that has a wheel on this side and a wheel on that side and basically they're packing the dirt back to seal this crack. This is what I don't like right here. See that crack? So if I had those wheels on the back, it would have just pushed this dirt like that and pushed the dirt from that side and it would have sealed it up just like that. But we did not have it on there. Um, so that's the job of the J&M rolling basket. Hopefully it's gonna run it over and it's gonna stir up enough dirt and just seal that crack. But I had started on this field when we were doing the demo with the rolling basket and I was working my way across and then we got rained out and that's where I stopped and we pretty much been wet ever since but now it's just getting dry enough but as you can see we've got a lot of winter weeds that have come on which is going to make it harder to seal that crack with the J&M rolling basket all this hem bit and stuff so I think we're going to be okay because he's making a pass right there and it looked good but if we would wait another two weeks um, it would not be doing a good job because the weeds would would be keeping us from sealing that crack so this is his first pass right here and as you can see it is definitely sealed up the crack you can't even tell where it was and these little ripples right here that you see i'm not worried about that we're gonna get some rain over the winter and it's gonna settle all that dirt and mellow it down once we get a couple of rains this is what it's gonna look like and that is ready to plant That is not supposed to be out here. It's a rebar. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is when we demoed this plow, uh, I think it was Drew from Case IH, he actually showed me a pretty good technique of what we're not doing when we're trying to find that compaction zone. When we shoot a probe down like I do from the topsoil going down to find that compaction zone, you're getting the top of the compaction zone. He said, you wanna dig down with this shovel right here and you wanna find the bottom of that uh, compaction zone hard pan whatever you want to call it because that is where the tip of the plow actually needs to be running at the bottom of the uh hard pan so we're going to dig down find that get a measurement we'll mark it on the shank and then we'll know how deep to run that uh that uh inline ripper there's philip right there he's just getting here so let's go dig
Man, I wish our pair of tails did that. Folded, that is nice. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna be setting up an AB line. I'm at the end of the field. We're gonna set an A. We're gonna go all the way to the other end of the field, set a B, and then we should be dead on our row. But what we have to do first, we gotta swap back implements to the uh, inline ripper. It may take me just a second. I'm still learning how to use this new software. Um, so here we go, let's do it. Here. Implement. Uh, 2,500. Yes. And we go back here. There we are. What's neat is you can turn this around however you want. Zoom in. Isn't that neat? And if you want to go back to where you were, just hit that button. All right. We want a straight A B line. I think I'm pretty much lined up. I want to hit record. I want to hit A. Alright, now we go to B. One thing I love about this 380 case uh, compared to our old 340 is when, when you would put it in forward, um, it would automatically take off unless you had the clutch mash. This one does not take off at all. You put it in forward, it does not move till you move this hydrostat handle. I love that option right there. That's pretty neat. So we'll zoom on to the other end of the field. And then we'll mark our B and then we'll plow on the way back. See how we did. Looks good to me. So now we'll mark B. And there's our lines. Well, what'd you find out? Uh, same depth it was over there. In the valley? Yeah. If I remember correct, just jab it in, right? Yeah, go all in. Yeah. Come up till you hit it. Right there. I'll let you try it. Whoops. In there. Nine, nine and a half. And that's by the looks of it, I dug up over there. You're going right up. This is a nine inch spade. <clears throat> that's it right there. Nine, nine and a half. That's amazing. That's the same as the valley. Yeah.
pipe is here. <laughs> Got it on camera. Oh! What we're doing is putting a pipe in right here. The pivot always gets stuck right here. It goes down in this ditch and I just can't climb the hill. It's too steep a hill, so put a culvert. The only thing left to do, Wayne's gonna go grab some dirt, make a little crossing to go over it, and mark it off the list. We got one more to do. Wayne's gonna go get some dirt, pack it on top of it where the pivot can walk across it, mark it off the list. Well, I guess y'all have waited long enough. It's time to show y'all what we bought, and I think you're gonna like it. So this is what we bought. We bought a track hoe and I'll go over a little bit with you and kind of tell you a little bit about it and uh, you'll see it working in some later videos but we'll just kind of do a walk around right now and just kind of show you what it looks like and the things that I did like about it and the reason we bought it. Uh, so like I said it is a Cat 323FL. It is a 2017 model. Um, it's got 4,200 hours on it. But these are the things that really sold me on this machine. I had one machine that was my first pick. It was a 325. It went a little bit higher than I wanted. Um, so this was actually my second pick. We had about 12 picks, but this was the number two and we ended up getting it. And the reason I love this machine is it's got a lot of features on here that I wanted. I don't have to add anything to it. Catwalk right here was a bonus. I think that is my favorite so far. Um, love this catwalk. You can walk all the way down it. You can get to everything. If you want to clean up something off the top, you can just stand right there. It's easy to get in and out with that extra catwalk step. Um, so love that. It's got it on both sides. Other reason I love this machine is it came from uh, Blanchard Cat Rental. I think that's the right name. <laughs> yeah, Blanchard, you can't really read it. But anyway, it was a rental machine and they really, really kept this machine looking good. I mean, you can't find any dirt anywhere, no sticks or anything, leaves, radiator, everything looks like it's basically brand new. I mean, it is in pristine shape. That was one of the big reasons that um, that we like this machine. It had a little had a little more hours than I wanted on it. The 4,200 hours, you know, that was kind of getting up there. But the way this machine looked and how good condition it was kept in, and it wasn't dented up at all, kind of why I was okay buying this machine even though the hours were a little more than I wanted but the way they have kept this machine and the shape it was in I was definitely okay with the amount of hours on it it's got a little wear and tear back here on the back but that's normal I mean you're gonna get that when you're working as long as the fenders over here aren't all dented up and the cab not dented up 
the little scratches back here I'm probably gonna get a lot more back here on it but it's got a camera got the catwalk on this side too and what was really cool is I got to do some research on this but this came with the grade control not sure how to get all that activated and what you need to actually use it with this machine but what I've read is basically if you want to dig a ditch on a grade uh, you somehow set it up in the machine and that bucket will only go down so deep and it won't go any farther as you dig your ditch so that's a cool option I don't know if we'll ever get that working but it's got it if we need it what you see right here I mean look at this things look brand new really really impressed with how they kept this machine so one of the biggest features that sold me on this machine was this thing right here this right here is what they call a thumb and you can have a manual thumb where you kind of you have to bolt it in place where you want it and you want to move it out of the way you got to bolt it but this one had a hydraulic thumb so basically from in the cab right there i can work a little switch and it will squeeze this down like that and you can just grab stuff move it real easy when you're digging dirt if you want to move it up out of the way you just raise it all the way up and it comes up out of the way where you don't even know it's there when you're digging dirt and stuff but this was a huge feature that i i wanted on a track hoe and this one had it and that was the reason it was our number two pick because it had the hydraulic thumb and what i've heard if you ever buy one with it you'll never buy one without it uh everything right here with the bucket and all everything is really really tight nothing is sloppy loose I mean, you move the boom side to side, you have no shake. Everything is really, really, really tight. So we'll go up in the cab, check it out. It's got a little brush guard right here. We'll get up in here. The cab was, I did all this. It was clean. But the cab, everything in, the, in here looks pretty much brand new. So you got your radio back there, you got your air conditioner. Air conditioner is really, really cold, blows really, really hard. Checked it out. Um, then this is your main screen. This is how you work your tracks down here. And this is your boom controls right there. That right there is what actually moves the thumb. That thing right there, a little button. But we'll crank it up, let you listen to it run. There's a thumb. So there it is. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the video. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, but I'm gonna go jump on this Traco, go test it out. I got a couple of things I wanna do with it today. But the reason we bought this Traco is it is gonna stay on the farm. We've always got projects lined up that we need Tracos. And we've been wanting one for as long as I can remember. We've always, man, I wish we had a Traco. Man, we could, if we had a Traco, we could be doing this. So now we've got one. And I know we got a good one, so we're just going to stay on the farm and do a lot of work for us over the years. So if you're wondering where we bought this, JM Wood Auction. Should be a link up here to their website uh, above my head. Anyway, we have known them my whole life. Uh, they are one of the best family-owned auctions. If you're looking for farm equipment, construction equipment, dump trucks, 18-wheelers, you name it, road scrapes they will have it all and it's family owned like i said i've known russ one of the owners since i was five years old he's one of my best friends and uh they just do a top notch job so they do online bidding you don't even have to be there they're located right there in montgomery but we have bought for them 
our whole life. We're going to keep buying from them as long as this farm's still running. Um, so go check them out. Like I said, the link's up there. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, catch y'all on the next one, guys. We're out.